mission number one for today. Get these pants tailored. These are the Rick Owens raw denim from the Dark Shadow line. The proportions are made to be exaggerated and it has a extremely long flare at the bottom. When it comes to like specs, I'm a 34 inseam and if I were to kind of guess how long these are, I would say maybe a 38. Um, I think it's due to the nature of just the Rick Owens aesthetic being kind of very out there and I guess the footwear that is supposed to be worn with this is the Kiss boots, which I don't have and don't think I will ever own. So I definitely need to get these tailored today. I'll show you guys the results whenever I get these in, but these are the pants. I've had them for like maybe two months in my closet. Never had the opportunity to wear them just because they were extremely long. So I had to kind of keep this in the closet, but I really, really want to wear this and just, yeah. I think it's my first pair of Rick Owens apparel. And uh, yeah, beautiful quality, just really stiff. I'm not sure how many ounces this denim is, but it's a very nice, firm uh, material. And overall, just a beautiful piece, uh, just sucks. I won't really say it sucks that it's too long. I think it's made to be like this. I'm just not the intended audience to be wearing this specific pair of pants, but I still do want to wear it. All right, let's get this going. Sip of that green juice. Yeah, I'm like slowly trying to get back on a healthy lifestyle. Just running, physical activity, just consuming a lot of healthy stuff. Anyways, what's up guys? Um, this is going to be uh, the segment where I talk about my, why is the chair creaking so much? So this is gonna be the segment where I talk about my summer essentials. It's not necessarily gonna be like a guide or anything like that. It's just me talking about my personal summer essentials. So if there's anything that you guys enjoy from everything that I showed so far, feel free to incorporate them into your own personal closets. I know I always say I'll be linking stuff below, which I never do for some reason. So for this video, I'll try to link whatever I can. Some things are maybe either sold out or just like older items. Uh, so I won't be linking those, but for kind of like the stuff like the Uniqlo, I'll make sure to put down below, so. Hold me accountable on that because I always say that and I never end up putting uh, the stuff below. Anyways, let's begin. So first and foremost, uh, summer essential number one is just white t-shirts or uh, t-shirts in general, short sleeves. This one is from the Uniqlo U line. It's I think just the basic t-shirt. It comes in a bunch of colors. So obviously this is the white. It does come in like a charcoal gray, 
black and uh, some other various colors but for me I pretty much stick to like the whites blacks and grays when it comes to summertime I don't necessarily like too much colors even just in general I don't wear too many colors like that so I kind of stick to the basics and uh, these ones are very comfortable these shirts are about 20 bucks a pop honestly believe for the price this is the best you can get there's like the oversized cut versus this one it's just a standard I pretty much keep it at the standard cut and uh, for me I go for a size medium so essentials number one let's keep it going alright so for essentials number two I just like to have something over my head and it's just a bunch of caps this cap um, we dropped this last year and surprisingly I've went back to it and I've been wearing it a lot to actually keep it for the rest of the video I've been wearing this hat a lot for some reason it's just like regular trucker hat uh, with the black mesh in the back and it just has the ore uh, print in the front and uh, for other hats I have my Star Trek hat for some reason I absolutely love this one I wear it all the time and uh, I don't know it's just something about first of all the shape hats that are kind of made in the 90s they just have a specific shape that I really do fancy and uh, just the kind of metallic gray silver embroidery in the front that says Star Trek and uh, this one right here is one of my newer acquisitions, it's from the brand Auto958. It's kind of like a subsidiary brand of Kiko. They drop like jackets, hoodies, and a bunch of stuff like that. But this right here is just their classic logo. And this is the exact same uh, hat type uh, that MoMA uses for their uh, MoMA caps, I guess. A new era, very breathable for the summer, and uh, just a color, nice Kelly green. If I were pretty much like an all black outfit, if I really want to add a pop of color, I just integrate this one right here and it's good to go. So this is it. Okay, um, let's talk about a couple things. Let me see. Let's continue with trousers or bottoms. So this one is from COS, the brand COS or COS. I'm not sure how you say it. Actually my first purchase from COS, I know they do a lot of basics and stuff like that. And this one here is just a nice breathable, kind of pant trouser it has a very light um percentage of wool but it doesn't really feel thick nice and breathable for the weather and yeah that's just me in summertime i like to be very comfortable so i like to kind of wear stuff like that that enable a lot of airflow and these ones just fit beautifully i should definitely look more into cost for like their basics I dismissed them because I thought it was kind of like an H&M type of thing. For the most part, they do have a couple of few items that I've been really kind of liking, including these pants. And the color is black. I'm not sure if it looks more like a navy, but in all reality, these are all black and just a perfect, nice flowy trouser for the summertime. I would highly recommend it and it just pretty much goes well with a lot of shoes. So it's a perfect like in-between balance of just your classic and more of like a casual type of pant. All right, so for our next item right here, we have the shorts from Kenzo. I'm not really a big short guy. I don't wear shorts like that. I don't know, there's something about exposing my legs that I don't really care for, but I did want to try at least having one short, and uh, I went with the Kenzo. So first of all, shout out to the Kenzo family. So this is from uh, Nigo's first collection, and I think the name of this pant is called the Poppy poppy flower pad if I'm not mistaken uh, but yeah these are really really neat kind of like a nice canvas material mid-weight so it's not too heavy nor too light just has the Kenzo patch in the back the front Kenzo tag and a nice little print here so the fit of these are like above the knee uh, which I like in my I guess official first pair of shorts I really do enjoy them I will definitely look into getting more uh, kind of shorts like this, maybe not Kenzo, uh, because that's extremely expensive, but you know, kind of like your middle dickies and all that stuff. I know they kind of have same or similar version of looking shorts like this. So here we go. All right, so for our next piece right here, we have a camp collared shirt from Uniqlo. And uh, this is like a mix of like a cotton linen blend. Feels really nice and just like the texture on it is beautiful. And the kicker is that this is from the women's section. I love the way that this one kind of fits uh, versus the men's version. This has kind of like a nice slightly cropped fit to it. So when you pair something like this with the cost trousers, 
I don't know, the look is immaculate and everything just kind of flows nicely. And uh, yeah, just a beautiful shirt from Uniqlo. Once again, women's section. So I did try both the medium and large for this item. And I personally feel like the large just fits slightly better on myself. Has a beautiful kind of charcoaly look to it, which is neat. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure the price. I don't remember exactly the price point of this, but I don't think it was more than like 40 bucks. Definitely a cop for summer. Nice, breathable material once again and comfortable as always. And yeah, just, I don't know. Summertime, being comfortable is like number one thing for me. And I know for a lot of people, summertime is a season where you tend to really go out with the colors, wearing more bold statement colors. But for me, we keep it black. We just ensure that the materials and everything is very comfortable and breathable, but we still go with black. All right, next accessory. These are the Apple AirPod Max Pro Max. I think so. iPod Pro. I can't even say this. These are the, I'm so confused with the iPod names and iPhone and all that. I think these are the AirPod Maxes. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but these have been popular as of late, you know, the whole Kanye thing and just, and in my opinion, aesthetically, it looks very neat and it's kind of like becoming a fashion accessory. Sometimes if you have a really kind of simple fit, you just kind of put these on and it completes the fit. Yeah, it, it really does. Honestly, I really feel like it does complete a fit, but um, in terms of sound, I'd give it maybe like a seven and a half out of 10. It's not the best sounding headphones, uh, but just the way it looks, I kind of like how uh, the colors, they're kind of like a nice dark metal. It's like space gray colorway and uh, just, yeah, it's, it's kind of subtle, but still there at the same time. Once again, sound isn't really the best. I feel like there's cheaper headphones uh, that offer just better sound in general, such as Sony or Bose. So if you're trying to purchase this item to get like the highest quality sound, I would maybe avoid this. I feel like if you're a casual listener and you are already in the whole Apple ecosystem, this is personally my favorite thing when it comes to over the ear headphones. Uh, so these are it and uh, yeah, just kind of cool. Once again, aesthetically pleasing. You look, you just look, look like a cool dude. Like, come on. All right, so for the next accessory, here we have a pair of shades from Off-White and Sunglass Hunt. I'm not really a sunglass guy. These ones were given to me by my sister a couple years ago, and yeah, every summer I just kind of take these out. It says, for your eyes only, and it has Off-White, CO, the sun. It's really simple. The shape of it, it has like a really square, I guess, Terminator, Blade Runner looking ass shape to it. And yeah, I don't really use these as often as I want to, but when it gets incredibly sunny, I tend to put these on and uh, yeah, just kind of gets the job done. Nothing too special about these. Just your classic pair of glasses and just the shape is really interesting. That's the Blade Runner vibes. Camera just cut, but let's keep it pushing. So for footwear, I don't know. This is a shoe that I kind of rebought just out of boredom and I woke up one day and I was like I really want to rebuy these uh, which I had back in like 2017 beat the hell out of them and decided to repurchase them it's just your classic vans with the flame pattern all over it gives me really like Hot Wheels vibes but for some reason I really do enjoy these with like a baggy pair of like sweatpants or you know, whatever the case may be, just chucking these on. I love shoes like this because I don't really need to think about them too much. I just wear them, beat them up, skateboard, bike. You know, there's no kind of, I don't wanna say value to them, uh, but you kind of just don't really need to baby them as much just because they're a very cheap pair of shoes. And yeah, it just gives you just like a nice summertime type of sneaker to wear as an everyday. Carrying on, these have been my daily drivers Right here we have the Ore Infantry Derbies with the white contrast stitching and the toe cap. I've been testing these a lot before our final production hits, I guess in a couple days. I'm very excited about that. Uh, but yeah, these are the samples right here. Has the white contrast stitching, the pronounced toe cap. One of the bigger changes uh, that the official version will have versus this one is the white stitching. I just kind of felt like the green was a little out of place and didn't really make sense when it comes to like an old black and white stitching shoe. So 
So the second and final detail that the official version will have versus these samples is that if you guys watch uh, the past vlog when I went to the office to show you guys the smooth calfskin version, the outsole was sticking out a little bit more, like 0.5, which is not really noticeable, but if you have the OGs or the boots and all that, you can definitely notice that the newer versions will have the protruding outsole. So it's not really a big detail that changes the integrity of the shoe, but I just wanted to kind of elevate um, all the details to the highest level if I can. Uh, so yeah, been wearing these a lot, just classic derbies and uh, yeah. I'm gonna talk about this brand in an upcoming video as I did receive a few additional items from them. Uh, but shout out to Simply Complicated out in Osaka, Japan. Constantly killing it, just really elevating the brand. They dropped a couple months back their mule and I think this color and it had like a tobacco brown. Pretty much the same version as the tobacco brown but this is just the sand uh, suede version. Clean aesthetic, it does have the Vibram outsoles to it and yeah just very comfortable easy shoe to rock pretty much be styled in various situations and uh, yeah overall just a really good shoe i've been wearing them a lot these surprisingly have been pretty regular in my rotation uh, hence why i put these in the video just because i wear these a lot so shout out simply complicated shout out tommy and the entire team you guys are constantly killing it so so dope last shoe uh, right here, we are kind of entering the foam runner ecosystem. And this, I'm not sure the name of this, but these are from Balenciaga. As I just mentioned, these are pretty much similar to the Yeezy foam runner, but the Balenciaga version of them. It has the closed mold here, so your foot doesn't stick out, but it does have like these kind of ridges and perforation that allows your foot to breathe and uh, yeah, just like the Balenciaga branding on the back. I think, yeah, there is also on the front. And uh, yeah, just a very comfortable shoe. I remember my entire trip to Italy and Germany, I was wearing these and felt amazing, especially like when you're on a plane or something. Six plus hour plane ride. These right here are your best friends. Pretty much feels like you're not wearing anything. And yeah, it kind of falls into the category as like the Salehi Crocs. Uh, the Yeezy Foam Runners, the Matthew Williams, like every brand essentially now has their version of a EVA sneakers slash kind of sandal. Um, and this is just the Balenciaga version of it. So here we go. Using these quite a lot as well. All right, so for the last category, let's talk about bags. There are two notable bags that I've been using a lot. And uh, first, let's just begin with uh, the Somar bag. Shout out Owen. This bag right here, as soon as I got it, I've been using it almost every single day. Traveled to multiple places. I think I went to Amsterdam, Germany, Italy, Canada. I've been to a ton of places with this bag and it's been holding up quite beautifully. The outer shell is nylon. The straps are leather and it does have the reinforced stitching and kind of rivets all over the bag. It's just a beautifully crafted bag. I won't really even call this a tote bag. I feel like this is more of like a travel bag. This is like bigger than your traditional tote bag. Um, so I pretty much use this when I travel or I carry a lot of things inside. It's been holding up quite beautifully. Looks still brand new even though I've used this for maybe the past two months, maybe five to six times a week. Pretty good details, multiple pockets on the inside. There is also the kind of zipper closure so your items don't fall out, which is amazing. We're all a beautifully crafted bag. I'm not sure if they still have these on the website, but if they do, definitely scoop one. Amazing bag for the price. And uh, yeah, just shout out to Somar and I was gonna say shout out to Omar. Shout out to Somar and Owen uh, for really killing it. Can't wait to see what he does in the future. Just. The brand itself is shaping up to be something really special. The last item of this segment, uh, we're kind of sticking with the tote bag slash kind of travel things. So to end off the video, we are going to, I guess, continue with the tote bags. And here is the bizarre bag from Balenciaga. This was a bag that I was eyeing ever since they kind of showed it in, I think the 2016 runway show. It was like Demna's first uh, Balenciaga show and uh, I remember seeing these bags and I was just and 
enamored by it. Just the colors, the type of crinkle leather that it has on it. And um, yeah, I don't know, just, you know, your traditional kind of bag that your mom would have. Like my mom had bags that look like this. Uh, so the irony of them making the higher quality version of this bag is really ironic and funny to me uh, but it still has such a beautiful aesthetic was something on my grail list and i'm super stoked to be finally owning it years and just not finding it um so yeah shout out to japan you know japan has everything I had to go all the way to japan uh to find this particular bag i didn't obviously go to japan but you know what i mean the conclusion of my summer essentials just are just items that i personally use during this summer season Hope you guys found some enjoyment in me showing off these items. Curious to know what is your summer essential or like one item that is your kind of top summer essential. Let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, just jump on to the next clip. Sundays at the studio by myself. This is the day, so the weekend is pretty much off. Nobody ships or whatever. Um, I just come here to do some extra work, emails, just kind of getting the studio prepped for the week. And I uh, just wanted to kind of show you guys what we have left. Shout out to my sister for like these uh, custom size tags so we don't get confused. Uh, but these are all the 1917s that remain. A couple of 13s, 8s, and then 9s. Everything else, unfortunately, has sold out. So thank you guys for that. And if you may, I'll show you guys uh, the shoe in person. Let me talk about it for a couple minutes and uh, get to my work. All right, it's incredibly hot here. 
So I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible. Had to off the AC so you guys can kind of hear me while I speak. Here, just like a proper unboxing slash showcase of the restock. So similar to the first version, we are keeping the exact same box. I feel like the 1917 shoes will all come in this olive green box, unless we decide to change it. You never know with me. I feel like I'm always constantly trying to fix things and tinker with stuff. Uh, so for now, I'm keeping the green box. We do have the glossed out size tag here. I'm not sure if you can see it correctly, but it's like a plasticky size tag. First things first, it does come with a separate pair of black laces. If you guys want to switch them out, this is the second drop of the 1917s. This is like the major restock we did. So little things that I can mention is that compared to the first version, we did change the canvas. Uh, this has a different uh, kind of type of canvas versus the first one. I'm not entirely sure if you can kind of see it on camera, but the pattern work on this versus the V1s is different. It has like a little bit of a softer touch to it and just looks overall better than the first version. Point of contingency, which was needed to be fixed immediately is the back zippers. We did upgrade the zipper itself as well as just the type of stitching. We decided to give it more space and make a thicker cut of leather here, which results in it not getting caught versus the first version. But besides that, this is the entire shoe. We're incredibly proud of it. This is our interpretation of the classic Chuck Taylor and the Rick Owens uh, Ramones. I feel like I like the Ramones, but sometimes they look a little bit too chunky. And my problem with the Converse is, is that they're a little bit too narrow. So this pretty much bridges those two aesthetics into one and creates like, uh, I guess the mutated baby. And then we did add kind of details from our previous drop with the back zip. So we have a few samples. I think I showed this in a prior video, but we have a few sample versions we've been testing so far. Uh, we're not entirely sure which one we're gonna drop. We're inclining to drop this one uh, first, but we have different materials, different, uh, just leathers and versions of this that we really wanna make. So we're incredibly excited for that of the 1917s. They're currently in stock on the website. We have a couple pairs left in several sizes. So definitely check it out if you guys are interested as we're not gonna be restocking this year so many projects coming out for the fall time. Cannot wait to really share details because a lot of exciting things coming up for the brand, uh, which I'll share with you guys in the near future. Gotta go put the AC back. I am sweating. Let's have a little discussion when I get back to my apartment. Just stepped in. I don't know why I'm on the floor, but uh, let me show you uh, these shoes. So I initially had a part in the video where I unbox it and talk about it, but that part of the video got corrupted for some reason, so we don't have the unboxing anymore. Uh, but these are the shoes right here. This is about, I would say, a week of everyday wear. Um, so anyways, I didn't really talk about these, but these are the Tom Sachs General Purpose Shoe, which dropped, I think, early July. And, uh, they're called quote unquote the boring shoes because there's not really any particular extravagant design detail. It's a very basic looking shoe uh, when it comes to just sneakers in general. This shoe has the waffle outsole as well as these blue kind of pull tabs. And uh, yeah, it's a very simple shoe. I'm just gonna show you guys how it looks. So my goal essentially is to wear this anytime I go to the office, hence the reason why I wore them today. And uh, yeah, they've been kind of holding up pretty nicely. There's a little bit of discoloration on the suede area, but uh, it's not really too much of a problem. But for this shoe, I'm like challenging myself to really wear them uh, to its fullest extent. I think these retail for about a hundred bucks. Uh, so honestly, very cheap for Nike standards. And you do get a lot for that price. It's a very well-crafted shoe. Details are very simplistic, but I feel like that's the allure of sneakers. Like I feel like right now, shoes are meant or look very outlandish. You know, there's a lot of brands here that are kind of pushing the envelope when it comes to design. 
Um, so seeing a shoe or owning a shoe that's this simple obviously is refreshing. And obviously I'm a big fan of Tom Sachs' work. Uh, so I wanted to definitely get my hands on these. I think in future vlogs, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick update on how it's looking. This is about five or six wears in, a week's worth of kind of just everyday office work. All right, so this is where I'm gonna end the vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed. There's not much of events or anything like that, but I wanted this one to be a little bit more simplistic, more laid back. So yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy this type of content. I'll definitely be making more vlogs which I truly enjoy filming. And uh, there's a lot of things happening, which I will document um, in these vlogs. Uh, so yeah, see you guys next time. We out, get off the floor real quick. Oof.